If you've been watching any of my videos lately, you know that I've been working on the rudder control on the Ultra Cruiser here. And I mentioned that I really like the control rod setup that this airplane uses. One viewer asked me why, what the advantage was to having the control rods. Because, and I'm assuming that was because I had mentioned the way the Minimax that I built in the past was set up. And I don't know if he was talking about regular control wire cables or the push-pull, so I'm just going to talk about both of them. On the Minimax, for the rudder control, you had cable just like this. In fact, this was some that I had left over from years and years ago on the Minimax. And on the ends of the cable, you use a thimble and then a crimp, and you wrap it around, and we had one of these mounted to each pedal. And on the Minimax, the pedals weren't on a rod like that. They were just hinged to the floor of the plane and worked independently. They had a little spring behind them that kept them pulled up. But you had this wire or this cable, and it would run back through the bulkheads, kind of similar to what the rod does, except they were small little inserts that were drilled in the center, and you just run the cable through it, and they'd run that all the way back to the tail. And you had one on each side, and there was a control rod, you know, similar to how the pedals are hooked together. And you push one pedal, it would pull one direction, you push the other, it pull the other direction. And there were some turnbuckles in the cable to tension it. And that system worked fine. I had no complaint with it. If they would used that kind of system on the Ultra Cruiser, it wouldn't have bothered me at all. But instead, we've got the control rods. Now, the other thing that the Minimax used, the Minimax used, was what are called push-pull cables. And here's a small one off a, this is off a jet ski, but this is the exact same kind of cable. And when you pull on one end or push on one end, the opposite end of the cable moves in and out. And what you've got is this control rod that comes out and then you have it hooked back in here it's got to be crimped to a smaller wire that's encased in this housing and that housing has a hard plastic surface on the top it has braided steel underneath and then it has like a teflon or some kind of plastic liner for that wire to slide in to uh, keep it that way you can pull and push with it and these work really good, but like I mentioned in the other video, besides the end of it, you can't inspect it. You can't check it and make sure what kind of condition everything is in inside of it. And that was one thing I didn't like about them. And they used one long one on the Minimax to run the elevator, and then they used two shorter ones to go to each wing and run the ailerons. And they did actually at one point have some problems because this, this section right here is kind of flexible, like a little joint under that rubber piece. And apparently they had an issue with it jamming up. So their solution was to put another piece of hose over the top of this. This was actually a service bulletin from team and you would clamp that on both sides there to keep that straight, keep it from ever getting hung up. And that just really doesn't inspire confidence. And in fact, when these Minimaxes were sold over in Europe, they didn't pass inspection with just one elevator cable. They had to use a redundant two cables to run the elevator. And that works fine in case one breaks, but if one jams up and locks your elevator in place, then it doesn't help you at all. And can you imagine being out practicing stalls, full up elevator and it get hung up and you can't, I mean, you try to force it forward and you'll end up breaking something else and then you're in a stall and spin and die. I like them on boats, but these push-pull cables, because they run everything on those. Shifting in and steering and my little sea -Doo jet boat it boat is 26 years old. I've had it for the last 20 years. All the cables are original 
and they have had a hard life, a long life, but like I said before, if one of those breaks, you just get towed back to shore. One of these breaks on an airplane, you may die. So I really not a fan of the push-pull cables. The thing I like about the rods is that even with everything, you know, fuel tank, everything put in, in this plane, you can get down, you can inspect to make sure the rudder pedal and everything is good, fastened up. That one's plainly visible. When the stick is in there, you'll be able to see those rods. There'll be some joints behind this bulkhead right there. And on this side, you'll be able to see them. You go around to the tail, you'll be able to see the end there uh, where it hooks on back there. So everything can be inspected. Whereas you can't inspect everything on these cables. Now, if I guess if Hummel had wanted to use a cable like that for the elevator, you know, you could make that work. That would have been fine. Trying to run it to the ailerons, as many direction changes as you've got. Now you'd end up with pulleys and just better with the rods and the bell cranks there. But Minimax used these and that was about the only thing that, you know, kind of worried me on that was just that something would happen. As long as they're working good, they're nice, smooth, easy to control. And you can just screw on whatever attachment you want on the ends of these, where it's threaded there. The Minimax used a ball and socket in, so you could just spring load. They were spring loaded. You could just snap them on if you needed to take the wings off. It worked really slick. I think right now, since this is an old cable that I have no use for off a jet ski, I'm going to take it and cut it up, and we'll see exactly what's inside of it. All right, I chopped that apart. Get that to focus. You see you have the inner wire. You have an inner liner. You have wires on the outside as a reinforcement and then the outer covering. Just like I was saying. And when you cut that loose, then you can pull out the inside and here's what you've got here's this piece that you hook up and your push pull wire is that right there and that is just crimped into that and you can push where this wire is flexible because it is inside this reinforced housing you can use it to push along with pull but that's not, uh, that's one piece of wire. Not very big wire. Ah, I'm, I'm glad I'm not flying with one of these again. Yeah, I much prefer this. It's big, it's in the open. I can see it. It's strong, but lightweight. And like I was thinking the other day, if your rudder cable, if you had the cable like that and it broke, you'd be in a mess. But if something broke down there at the pedal, you could literally reach out and run your rudder by hand if you absolutely had to, which I thought was kind of cool. But yeah, that is why I like this system better. I hope that answers your question. And thanks for watching.